produce various rendering and shading effects with Arnold and Ornatrix for 3ds Max, we can allow the hair to interact with the Arnold shading pipeline by sending down the data or exporting data into Arnold from Ornatrix. In this tutorial, we're going to go over how to do this and what you'd use this for. So to start, I have some hair here and I have previously assigned a standard hair shader to it. This is the Arnold hair shader, which you can find in the surface drop down over here. And you can really use any material uh, that Arnold provides. It doesn't have to be standard hair, hair but, um, but it's nice to render hair with a hair shader. On top of my modifier stack in my uh, hair object, I have the Ox Arnold modifier. And uh, if you don't have this already, you can add this from the modifiers dropdown. And it is required to be able to render Arnold hair with Ornatrix. If I just uh, quick render the scene right now, you can see that the hair is there. It renders black. Uh, because even though the base color is uh, set to a different color, the melanin overrides this. And uh, if I reduce the melanin here and we render, you can see more of uh, the base color that we specified. So first thing is uh, let's create a strand channel and set it to some manual value and see how we, we can expose uh, this channel directly into the material that's used on the hair. I'm going to go into the edit guides uh, inside my operator stack. I'm going to select the roots. And then uh, first thing is actually I'm going to create a new strand channel. I'm going to press add and uh, create a channel. Let's name it test and channel. Now we have two strand channels. Uh, I'm going to select all of the strands and assign a value of zero to them. And then I'm going to select exactly half of my hair and assi assign a value of one to this side. So everything on the left is zero, everything on the right is set to one. If I go to my Ox Arnold modifier now, uh, if I refresh, you can see that we have this test channel listed in the export strand channels. So this list is uh, populated with the currently available hair strand channels that are generated in the stack. And uh, nothing is selected by default, but you can select one or more of these channels. So whichever channels you select end up being exported to Arnold. So if you can export all of them, it's just a matter of deciding if you want slightly slower evaluation, because if you have really lots of hair and uh, lots of channels, uh, you can save yourself a little bit of time and resources by just selecting the channels that you need to export. I'm going to select the test channel here. And then inside the material editor, I will decide what I want to use this channel for. And for example, in this case, it's a single scalar value. So I'm going to use it to control this base attribute over here. Uh, there are various ways to do this, but I'm going to just drag out this uh, base slot here. I'm going to select Arnold and then I'm going to select user data and uh, just the user data float, which will create this node over here. If I select this node, you see the attribute field here is empty. We need to change this field to be the same name as the exported channel over here. So once I do this, the exported channel named test, which is selected here with this attribute string, is going to control our base color over here. If I just uh, render my hair, you can see that the side on the right now gets uh, more base color and the side on the left doesn't get any base color at all. This will actually become more evident if I decrease the melanin even further. You can see the dramatic effect here. So you can use uh, this to control either per strand or per vertex, any kind of um, uh, hair shading that can participate inside the material or, or anywhere else inside the material editor. Uh, directly uh, by painting it or by generating the strand data using our strand data operator. So for now, we've been only generating a single floating point value. But what if we want to control a color, for example, this base color, or even better, maybe the diffuse color of our material. Onertrix allows you to export more than one channel. In this case, we want to export three channels, one to control the R, G, another G, and the third one to control the B uh, parts of our color. And this is relatively easily done. I'm just going to add a new generate guide data operator. And I'm just going to create some random random color here. First, I'm going to change the name of, this oper uh, of the output channel. I'm just going to call it color to be very evident. I'm going to change the number of channels that are created from one to three. 
this is a new channel so all of these values are default and this is fine the only other thing we need to change is the method we need to change it from constant to random so that we're generating random values for three channels between 0 and 1 if I go back to my Arnold modifier you can see that we have three color channels generated they are uh, all named color and they have a suffix of underscore and then the unique integer value for 1, 2 and 3 so if I select all of these three channels uh, they're going to be exported into Arnold and because the channels are consecutive and because they have consecutive uh, uh, suffix one is one, second is two and third is three they're going to be treated as a single RGB exported channel similarly if your channel is named uh, underscore R, underscore B, G and underscore B it's going to do the same thing and uh, the actual exported channel name is going to ignore whatever happens after the underscore so it's just going to be named color so let me show you how to do this first is you go to the diffuse color and again you go through the same procedure of adding a user data node and in this case it's going to be RGB node I'm going to select it the attribute is going to be called color again it's ignoring the underscore and everything that goes uh, after it and uh, I'm just going to set this uh, diffuse weight to 1 so that we can see the diffuse values completely on the hair and they're going to override everything else and I'm going to render my scene and uh, every single hair strand in the render now has uh, its own unique random value and these values again are not generated by Arnold they're generated by Ornatrix based on this generate guide data operator you can paint these values manually and we'll cover how to do this in a separate tutorial uh, you can also do things like um, control the shading of the hair from root to tip or maybe even control this by the length of the hair so longer hairs have a different color than the shorter ones and we'll probably cover this in a different tutorial as well just to save us some time in this one so uh, this is the very basics of how to drive R node values with Ornatrix and I think it exposes a very powerful way of, uh, of shading your hair.